from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Monday, April 29th. So the moon is going to be in Capricorn all day, which of course gives us a more logical, practical approach to how it is that we're going to complete our roles, our responsibilities, our tasks, our chores, in order for us to clean that mess up so that we can get a little bit more focused on what we want to build, what we want to create for our long-term goal, our long-term vision. There's definitely a little bit more of a seriousness, a somberness that comes with the moon in Capricorn, especially because we're already in an earth season being in Taurus energy. And so earth on earth just makes us very present, very heavy, very weighted in our physical bodies, in our physical environment, in order for us to kind of take a lay of the land, reevaluate what needs to be done, so to speak. And so with that being said, we're definitely taking a grounded, more anchored approach to kind of taking a good look around at our current situation and circumstance. But even on top of that, we have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, taking her rulership in Taurus energy here today. I'm going to encourage you to take a listen to that astro forecast that I put out there for this event. And I'm also going to encourage those of you that have downloaded your Taurus season e-guide to flip to the end of your workbook. This is the major event that we've been waiting for. Not necessarily just Venus moving into Taurus, but side note, Mars will be moving into Aries energy, his rulership here on the 30th. So that is the major deal to wrap up April and set the pace for how it is that we're moving into May. Not only that, this is again, Mars's last day in Pisces energy. And he has a big meetup with Neptune, who of course rules over the Pisces energy at the final critical degrees. This is a 165 year event that Neptune and Mars have been waiting to meet up in this Pisces energy. This is basically a download of mystical energies, of inspiration, of motivation, of vision, of goals, of dreams, of mission, of meaning, of purpose. And it's taking place at, again, 29th critical crisis degree, which is going to bring some urgency. And especially once kind of Mars moves into his rulership and Venus is in hers, we're going to have a huge shift in our mood and our attitude and our visions, our goals, our dreams, and in our ability to actually take action and make moves to bring new aspects to life. So definitely busy day here today, just with these, you know, ever changing aspects, these ever changing energies. There are nine different aspects taking place here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon. Very early in the day, we have Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. Again, coming up to, bumping into, teaming up with Neptune, both of them in Pisces energy. This is definitely going to trigger a lot of impulse, a lot of passion, a lot of desire. It can be very confusing still. We're still not quite clear of the, the mission, the details, if you will. However, this is the download from the higher realms of intelligence. And so Mars, who kind of rules over the physical energy that we use to pursue our passion, goals, and dreams, and Neptune, which is our dreams, our creativity, our imagination, our fantasy, uh, inspiration, and motivation from our higher selves. This is a huge, huge file to download. Think about it. When you, fi- when you download a file on your computer, sometimes it takes an extended amount of time before you, know, you can actually use your computer again because you're about to move into a new level of the operating system. Similarly, we just kind of busted out the new version of self out to play. We're still kind of, you know, recalibrating, getting in alignment, integrating, if you will. This Mars and Neptune conjunction is the download. It is the new operating system. It is the mission, if you will, that we were we will be pursuing over the next couple of months. So yes, it can kind of stir up some confusion, some restlessness, if you will, but our intuition is very strong. And it's not going to take long to actually understand what it is that we now have to do, what it is that we now have to pursue. We have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, taking her rulership in Taurus energy at 7.31 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, please go ahead, listen to that astro forecast, bust out your e-guides. This is going to be a beautiful energy for all of us to settle into. 
Now we sit in that energy for approximately two hours and then we have the moon in this Capricorn energy getting into the boxing ring, fighting it out, squaring off with the North Node in Aries energy. So first of all, a square creates tension and conflict because we're at a situation where something's got to give, something's got to change. We have to decide something, we have to choose something that will eventually help us get on the right path to actually move forward. That's what that North Node in Aries is trying to do. It's trying to push us into a new path, into a new passion, into a new quest, if you will. But the moon in Capricorn energy, we're just not having it. We have things to wrap up here. We have tasks and chores from the old version of self, from the old realm and reality that need to be tied up, need to have a little bit of closure, needs to be brought to a certain point of an ending before we can actually start, you know, formulating path plans and strategies for our long-term goals and visions. So it's almost like the Aries energy that the North Node in, again, impulse, urgency, let's get at it, let's do it, let's make some changes, let's take some action here. The Moon in Capricorn pumps the brakes, like, no, we're not ready to do that yet. We have, you know, we have things that we have to address, that we have to kind of wrap up, that we have to bring a closure to before we can kind of jump into something new. The moon then goes ahead and sextiles beautiful interaction with Saturn. So Saturn rules over the Capricorn energy. And of course, Saturn is the Lord of Karma. He rules over our roles and responsibilities and systems and structures and foundations and willpower and discipline. And of course, he's been in this Pisces energy, not only trying to wrap up his own 30 year cycle, but help us to deconstruct and totally collapse the old belief system the old ways of doing things, the old, I'm just going to call it system and structure that essentially society has been operating on with the delusion, with the confusion. We're looking to unpack that. Now, lucky for us, this is a positive interaction. A sextile is emerging of these energies. So we're really getting honed in and focused on what we have to build, what we have to create as far as new foundations, routines, and structures go. And of course, that's going to require a new level of willpower and discipline for us to make the changes that we have to make so that we can start building towards something new that will last us for the long term. The moon is then going to get in the boxing ring, square off with Mercury. Mercury is the ruler of the mental plane, rules over information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves just fresh in this direct position, slowly but surely moving forward in this Aries energy. The moon is our heart space, Mercury is our head space. They're not getting along right now, they're getting in the boxing ring. And a lot of this is begin because the Aries energy that Mercury is in wants to jump into something new, wants to initiate something new, wants to kind of, you know, just get the party started. The Capricorn energy has too many responsibilities to the to-do list, too many obligations and commitments to the old world, to the old self, to the old realm and reality, that we can't jump into something right now. The emotions that we are sitting in are thinking very seriously and somberly about what it is that we have to do, what we have to complete before we can jump into something new. And that's where Mercury and Aries is kind of creating this urgency, this impulse to push forward while the moon in Capricorn is pulling us back, at least to be in the present moment and not jump into something fresh, something new, and at least resolve some of the loose ends from this old version of self, the old realm, the old reality. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Neptune and then Mars, because of course, Neptune and Mars, they just met up. They're at the same degree. So there's an interaction here. And lucky for us, this is a positive interaction. We actually really like Pisces energy and Capricorn energy because the Pisces energy downloads us with a goal, a vision, a dream, inspiration, motivation, clarity on what intuitively we need to pursue for our higher quest, our higher mission from here. And the Capricorn energy gives it form. We're able to bring it to life. We're able to bring it into this world. We're able to actually understand the structure that is needed, the pieces that need to be put together in order to house the goal, the vision, the dream that we're now currently being downloaded with. Our intuition is strong, but we're also using logic and practicality in order to actually bring our intuition, our insights, our visions, our dreams into fruition, into manifestation, into this physical realm. 
The moon is then going to get in the boxing ring, square off with Chiron. So Chiron is the wounded healer. He's in Aries energy. Again, this new version of self just came out to play. We're still not as comfortable and as familiar as we would like to be operating in the new parameters of our worth and our values and our wants and our needs and our desires. And so again, a square creates tension and conflict because something's got to give. Now the moon in this Capricorn energy, again, well, it can be a little bit of a negative Nancy, it can be a little bit of a serious Sally, if you will. Um, and typically speaking, Capricorn energy is very traditional. We like to stick to what is tried, tested and true, unless we are kind of being presented with information and details that would help us to understand that a change is definitely needed, would be more efficient, would be better off, would be a huge improvement. But right now, there's a lot of hesitation because the old version of self, the egoic programming, is coming out to play to try and kind of snuff or stunt the rapid progression of this new version of self. And so, again, when Chiron, the wounded healer, is aspected in a not-so-nice way, such as a square, we tend to sit in our wounds. We tend to sit in our fears, in our insecurities, in our vulnerabilities. We're essentially, you know, picking the Band-Aids and the scabs off of our wounds that we've been trying to heal as a justification to not push ourselves forward, to not evolve, to not grow. Now, of course, we're not going to sit in this for very long, but the moon and Capricorn energy goes ahead and trines beautiful interaction with Uranus, the great awakener and Taurus energy. So this is some earth on earth energy. Uranus is beautiful to swoop into this particular point in time because he brings new insights. He brings new level of awareness, new level of consciousness. He helps to kind of break us up from that negative thought pattern or those wounds that we were sitting in. And he shows us the reason of why those not so nice thoughts and feelings take over in order for us to kind of catapult ourselves in the opposite direction, challenging ourselves to override those not so nice thoughts, those not so nice feelings that are trying to keep us in a state of paralysis. So this is like an aha moment, an epiphany on not only what it is that we need to do as far as moving forward goes, but what it is that we need to do to release ourselves from the past go. And because we're kind of in a new mood, in a new, let's call it attitude to kind of challenge the, the challenges themselves, this is an opportunity for us to really adopt a new perspective, a new understanding, new ways, new methods of actually dealing with some of the circumstances that have us kind of apprehensive for making changes and transformations and really just instilling a new level of confidence, a new level of awareness of what it is that we actually want, need and desire in us so that we can keep the momentum up. We can keep that inspiration and motivation and determination to a level that will actually help us see things through.